Yes, sir. So look, over the last 150 days, I tried out this online business called YouTube Automation. In this video, I'll be breaking down exactly how I did it, how much I made, and my true experience with it. No lies, no BS, just the truth. Let's get right into it. This journey started a couple months ago when I noticed Instagram was dying. I ain't gonna hold you, Instagram been dying for a little minute, man. It seemed like one minute you'll post a hit, the next minute they won't. The algorithm is always changing, they'll shadow ban you for no reason. That's the main reason why I sold one of my Instagram pages called Recession Money. I don't know if y'all remember that video, it's called I Started a Secret Instagram Page to Prove It's Not Luck. In that video, I talked about the page and everything like that. I got that page to over 250K followers but I had to let it go. But we ain't got to talk about that right now. I'm going to say that for one of my future videos. But the one thing I do love about Instagram is that I don't have to show my face on there because I be building Instagram theme pages. If you're not following BAC on Instagram, I post on there daily. So make sure you follow us. We had almost 700K on there. But I ain't going to hold you, bro. I'm a chill nigga. Like, I really just like to give my money, mind my business, and build dope shit. That's really it, bro. Like, I don't really got to be in the spotlight all the time. So I wanted to take, like, my approach with Instagram where I don't show my face. I wanted to find a way where I could do that on YouTube. So I did some research and by research, I just mean going on YouTube and typing in how to make money on YouTube without showing your face. I watched a couple of those videos and that's when I kept hearing about the term YouTube automation. One million dollars is exactly how much this one channel earned in the past year. Now, if you aren't familiar with what YouTube automation is, it's basically where we create channels with the clear intention of never showing our faces or even doing any of the work. All of the work is outsourced to offshore contractors. A whole lot of hype, right? They be making it sound real good. You feel me? So I had to try it out for myself, but I didn't just want to start any random channel that I cared nothing about just for money and views. Nah, man, it had to be deeper than that. It had to be something that I could work on for years and would impact millions of people. At the same time though, it had to be in a profitable niche with a high search volume. So I used a tool called vidIQ to do my research with that. The reason why you see everybody making videos on YouTube automation right now is cause it's a good keyword to rank for. It has a high search volume with low competition. But once I chose my niche, it was time to build a team. Now this is where I first found out that, yo, YouTube automation is not as easy as people make it seem. You see, there's two different routes you could go with YouTube automation. You could do AI automation where you get AI to make all of the videos or you could get a real team to produce them. I decided to build a real team for this because I wanted to give the channel a more personal feel. This was tough for me because I'm used to doing everything myself, but I managed to put together a great team using a website called upwork.com. All I did was throw up a job application for all the positions I needed and people started applying. From there, I looked through all the applications and found the best talent that I possibly could. Once I got my team together, the rest is history. We started being consistent and dropping videos every single week on the channel. Now let's take a look at some of the analytics. All right, so we started uploading on this channel October 1st, 2022. And as you can see, the first couple of days, we had no type of motion at all. As you can see, 20 views, three views, one view five views 26 10 and we was uploading now like we was dropping bangers but nobody was watching nobody was tapped in as you can see right here we got a little motion right there and then towards the end of the month that's when things started to pick up a little bit more we got 4,400 views on october 27th then it dropped back down to 478 october 29th but overall for the month we got 15.6k views 2,000 subscribers and we made $117, which isn't bad for our first month, but we did drop a lot of videos. It took a little while to get some motion, but hey, not bad for the first month. Second month, things was a little more active. The numbers got up a little bit more. We started off the month barely getting any views. We was at 157. Then we jumped up to 1600. But after that, after this video right here, it took off a little bit. We were starting to get consistent views every day, getting at least a thousand views a day. It's up right here. Did a little dip right there. But for the most part, after that one video right here, we got at least a thousand views a day. And then right here, that's when things really took off. So November 25th, we cracked our first 10,000 view day. So we got 13,000 views that day. Then 9,000, 14, 10, 15. Like it was up, you feel me? It was up. And then for the month of November, we crossed 114,000 views on the channel, 8.4K subscribers. And then we made almost $1,500 in YouTube ad revenue. 
December 2022 was a crazy month. I remember it like it was yesterday. Everybody was lit. It was Christmas time, holiday season. And you know they say in December, advertisers pay more because it's holiday season, people spending more. So that means the YouTube check is supposed to be a little higher. You feel me? So this month, heading into this month, I was on a high. I was like, yo, this channel about to take off. And we started off pretty good, like 7,700 views the first day, not too bad. 5,000 views the second day, 9,700 views the third day. So on December 6, 2022, we got 11,900 views, but that was the peak of the month because the next day, boom, we dropped down to 1,800, 1,500, 1,400. Hey, I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't hurt because we was on a high heading into the month. And the first week of the month, we was killing the game. But then things started to drop down to 1,400 views. I was hurt, I ain't gonna lie. But then things started to pick back up again. We was on the up and up. We had some motion going. 11,400 views on December 15th. But then from there, Man, I fell down to my knees when the law came. 10,000, 8,000, 5,000. How did we go from 11,000 views December 15th to end it off the month with 523 views in a day? But look, overall, we had this pretty solid month in my opinion. We got over 150,000 views. We got 7.1K subscribers and we made almost $1,500 with YouTube AdSense. And it was still a new channel at the same time. We only dropped like three videos this month. We were still figuring out the team and everything like that. So things didn't really fully come together this month, but overall we had a pretty solid month, even though we started off strong, but didn't end off too good. January, 2023, I ain't gonna lie. We had a pretty solid month off the rip. We was hitting 2,600 views the first day, 3,500 views, 2,900, 1,000, 1,000 while again. 4,700, 9,000, and then from there, we had the motion, man. Like, that's the thing about YouTube. Once you get some motion, once you get that momentum going, man, the rest is history. Like, as you can see, like, we got up to a point where we was hitting 28,000 views in a single day. Like, it was going crazy this month. Like, this month right here, this was the month that started off everything for us for real. Like we got in the real zone with this month. We got the team together, things was clicking. The editors was on it, the writers was on it. We was on it with the thumbnails. Everything was just coming together this month. And we ended off with 368,000 views, 14,000 subscribers, and we made $4,700 in YouTube ad revenue. So now we're on the current month, February of 2023. And so far, this has been our best month. Like we started off making $300 a day and then we got down to 240, 181. But then from there, it's been up. Like we was hitting at least two to $300 a day. We got 463 February 15th. And then we had our highest day on February 17th, hitting $475 in a day. I was lit that day, man. I ain't even gonna hold you. We made almost $500 from YouTube ad revenue, which is crazy. Now, of course though, of course, February was our biggest month so far. It's my birthday month. I was born February 22nd. It's my birthday. We made 339 on my birthday. Now, things did start to dip off right here. The last couple of days, it's been starting to dip, but it's all good. We still had our best month yet so far, and it's not even over with. We made 7,400 so far this month. We got 700,000 views and we gained 17.5 thousand subscribers. And the last thing I wanna show y'all is the lifetime analytics on the channel. So we got 1.4 million views so far, 50,000 subscribers. We just hit 50K the other day for the culture. And we made $15,000 from YouTube AdSense so far. I ain't gonna hold you, that feel good, man especially since we wasn't making no money at first. And that's what I really want y'all to focus on. I want y'all to really take a lesson from that because I see a lot of people get started with a channel or a business and they give up once they not making no money at first. And, and later on in this video, I'm gonna get into the profit and how much I actually spent. But right now I want y'all to focus on the days where I didn't make no money, but we were still dropping. We were still being consistent. We were still having hope. Even when things went up, but they went down again. We still was being consistent. We still was being patient. Patience is key, man. 
Cause a couple months in, we were still having days where we was only making fifty dollars, and then we started getting it to a point where we making a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, all the way up to four seventy five in a day. But we would have never got there if we didn't stay patient and we didn't stay consistent. Before we get into the expenses and the lessons I learned doing all of this, I want to break down how I grew the channel so that you could start one for yourself because I don't want y'all to just watch these videos and not take any action. Cause I be seeing y'all comments, I be seeing y'all DMs. Y'all boys is just like me, it's crazy man how much we alike. And that's probably why y'all watch me, but I don't want y'all to just watch me. I want y'all to take action on what I'm teaching y'all because I'm actually doing the things that I'm teaching y'all. I'm living through it and I'm learning the lessons so that I can bring them to y'all so that y'all can apply them to your own life. I'm not like these other finance YouTubers that just come on here and talk, but never put in no work or try to side hustles or the businesses that they teach. So if you're enjoying the value and the transparency of this video, drop a like on it and drop a comment down below. And let me know if you starting your own channel or your own Instagram brand, let me know what you up to. The first method we use to grow this channel is we used other platforms like TikTok and Instagram. So what we noticed at first is that we wasn't getting no motion from YouTube. Like they wasn't pushing out our videos. We wasn't getting no views. So we had to find another way to get people on the channel. So we used Instagram and TikTok, especially Instagram. Y'all know I know Instagram a lot. I've been on there for years. I know how to grow a page. So what we did was we grew a brand and we started running promos to promote the video. And that definitely shot up our channel a little bit. And then TikTok as well. We used TikTok, we started creating some shorts and we posted them on TikTok, which helped the channel a little bit. Number two, community tab posts. Now you can find this by going to your YouTube homepage and going to the community tab. You can upload an image, a video, or you can do some posts. Three, stay consistent. I brought this up when we was looking at the analytics and I showed y'all the days where we wasn't making no money and we wasn't getting no views. Like those days is tough, man. Like, especially when you go from making a lot of money and getting a lot of views to not making no money and getting no views, like. Man, I fell down to my knees when the law came. Okay. And key is to stay consistent no matter what you feeling, no matter if you getting no views, even if you getting hate, right? Cause sometimes you might post a video that the audience might not fuck with. Like they might not fuck with it. And they might leave a couple comments you got to deal with that. You got to learn from that. And sometimes the criticism might be valid. So just take that into account and just learn from the situation and stay consistent. No matter what, just stay consistent. And eventually things going to go up. You saw with the channel, I wasn't getting no money. I wasn't getting no views at first. And now we actually making money. The fourth thing that I'll say that really helped the channel grow fast is that we picked the lane of our own. And we picked the lane that really had no competition because all of the videos that we dropped in so far, Either one, nobody has covered them for years, or two, nobody covered them at all. So you don't have to pick an extremely popular niche to be successful. You can pick a niche that is really underserved and still perform well. And now I wanna move on to the lies you've been told about YouTube automation, cause there's so many lies out there. And if you're gonna start this, I want y'all to know the facts. I want y'all to know the real information. Number one is that you can get videos made for under a hundred dollars. That's cap. I ain't gonna lie, bro, that's cap, that's cap, that's cap. You feel me? Like you cannot get the videos made for under $100. And if you do, the quality is not gonna be there. I'm telling you right now, the quality is not gonna be there. Unless you use like AI or something like that. But I'm talking about just going to a freelancer and paying under $100 to do the, the editing, the scripting. I don't know how people be talking about they spend under $100 cause y'all about to see how much money I spend on this channel in just a second. And somebody telling you that you could get the videos made for under $100, man, either you extremely lucky and if they got talent, you extremely lucky or they just capping, bro. Number two is easy to grow a YouTube channel from scratch. It's not easy at all. Like, I ain't gonna lie, it's not easy at all to grow a channel from scratch. We wasn't getting no views from YouTube at first. We had to use another platform like Instagram and TikTok in order to get traffic on YouTube at first. And then once YouTube saw the traffic and everything like that, then, only then, it started getting pushed out a little bit. But at first, we wasn't getting no traffic from YouTube. So I can only imagine if somebody doesn't have another platform to drive traffic from, it'll be even tougher to grow. Number three is little to no work involved. Stop the cap. <laughs> Stop the cap right now. Stop the cap. Man, it's little to no work involved. 
Man, I seen that a couple times. I seen that on a couple videos. Niggas is capping. It's cap, bro. Like, yeah, it's a little bit less work than actually creating the videos yourself and hopping on camera and everything like that. But it's definitely a lot of work involved with it because uh, you gotta still come up with all the ideas. Thinking alone takes a lot of time, right? You gotta interact with the audience. You gotta make sure that the scripts is good. You gotta make sure that the videos is good. You gotta make sure that the voiceover is good. You gotta talk to your team every day and make sure that everything running smooth. There's definitely a lot of work that goes into it. Don't be fooled thinking it's little to no work because you definitely gonna be working. It's just in a different way. Next, I wanna get into some of the lessons that I learned doing all of this because it's truly been a learning experience. Number one, you have to build a team. I was somebody that wanted to do everything myself. I felt like I could do everything, man. Lone Wolf just dug in by myself. I ain't need nobody. I was a one man army. But that was the very thing that was holding me back. I'm telling you, once I built this team and this channel, it made me realize like, yo, you are really so much stronger with a team. If you have a strong team, you good. You feel me? Like, I can't even take credit for the channel. I gotta give the credit to my team. Like, we got a talented team. Like, the editor, super talented. The writer, super talented. The thumbnail, hey, my God. Hey, I, know, I don't know if you're watching this, but you my guy. My guy, you know who you is, man. My thumbnail guy. This is my whole team, man. I got love for everybody on my team. They all super talented, so I can't take credit for this. Like, I really got to give the credit to my team, to be honest. They the one that's really making everything come to life for me. Like, I'm really just the thinker and the minds and the money behind it, but they making everything come to life, so I can't take the credit. It's really my team. Number two, learn from criticism. So the reason why I put this on the list is because we had a video that was kind of, you know, controversial, I say. You know, people had a lot of different opinions about it. Some people loved it, some people hated it. Some people thought it was lies. Some people thought it was the truth. Like it was so many different opinions on it. But what we did was we learned from it. Like we didn't take the criticism as, hey, we just took it as maybe we are wrong. You know, some people might be criticizing for a valid reason. So not all criticism is hate. Some people might be actually trying to give you some constructive criticism. And if you actually take the time to listen to them and understand where they're coming from, your brand will be 10 times better because they're going to tell you what they like, what they don't like and everything. So just make the adjustments and improve your brand. The third lesson I'm learning is patience. And I keep talking about it because I'm really learning this lesson and what it really means to be patient. Because over the last couple of years, I got used to fast money and things growing extremely fast. Like y'all saw with recession money, I grew that page extremely fast and then I sold it within like five months or so. Black Hustlers Club, this brand right here, it grew extremely fast as well. A lot of my other brands grew extremely fast, so I'm kind of used to that now. But this brand right here, it did grow fast, but this is a long-term play. Like we plan on working on this for the next three to five years. And another thing is I'm still not even profitable, which we're going to get into right now, the expenses. I'm going to break this down completely for y'all month by month. So the first month I spent $600 on the monetized YouTube channel. I didn't want to start from complete scratch. I already had a YouTube channel monetized. So I was like, why not use that one instead? I already paid for it and I wasn't putting it to use. So I decided to use that channel for this. For the channel production, I spent $3,280. This includes the voiceover artists, the editors, and the script writers. Next, I spent $500 on thumbnails and I spent $2,075 on ads. Now, the reason I spent this much on ads is because I was using it to grow the Instagram page and the YouTube channel at the same time. So I felt like it should be included in this as well because it did play a part in helping the channel grow. So in the first month, I spent a total of $6,455 and I made $117 from YouTube ad revenue. Month number two, I spent $2,200 on video production, $440 on thumbnails, and $1,525 on ads. Month number three in December, I spent 
$3,563 on video production. The reason why this is a little higher for this month is because we was getting ahead of schedule. So instead of just making videos for the next week or the next two weeks, we was trying to get a whole month ahead. So we made as many videos as possible. I spent $330 on thumbnails and I spent $1,935 on ads. In total, I spent $5,858 and I made $1,493 from YouTube ads. Month number four, January, I spent $3,198 on video production. Again, we just made as many videos as possible. $465 on thumbnails, $1,225 on ad spend. In total, I spent $4,469 and I made $4,733 from YouTube AdSense. Month number five, February, we spent $3,589 on video production, $600 on thumbnails, and $1,175 on ads. In total, we spent $5,364 and we made $7,399. So that brings our complete total spent to $26,311 and our total ad revenue to $15,218. Now I know you probably like drill, why did you spend all that money? Can you explain it a little further? Because I see all online, people saying you can make videos for $100 and everything like that. Well, from my experience personally, the reason why I spent all that money on ads one is because it was growing the Instagram page, right? So during those five months, the page grew 125,000 followers and then the channel grew 50,000 followers. So it was growing the Instagram page and the YouTube channel at the same time. So that's why I kept running ads. It was really just growing both platforms at the same time. And as for the video production and the thumbnails, I really just pay my team good. Like they are super talented and I wouldn't be here without them. Like. They are really making this channel come to life. They're the ones putting it together. So I feel like they got to get paid good and they always come through, you feel me? So, and a lot of that came from us building up content as well. Like we are over a month ahead with content already. So a lot of that just came from us just making extra content. So that's why the numbers are so high. And I don't know where people find these editors that charge $50 and everything like that. The quality just isn't there when I was looking for them. So. I went with the best quality that I could find and I paid that price. So even though I'm in the hole right now, let me know, is this a W or L? Let me know in the comment section below. I feel like this is a W, man. Even though I'm like 10 bands in the hole, y'all yeah, can see the progress. I feel like this is a W, but hey, let me know if it's an L, if I should stop going with the channel. I ain't gonna stop though. I ain't gonna lie, I believe in the message. I believe in what we doing. So I feel like it's a W, even though I'm in the hole. That's just how entrepreneurship is sometimes. This is exactly what other creators won't show you. They won't show you being in the hole, 10 bands on a play or anything like that. They just wanna glamorize everything and make shit sound sweet when they know is really not. They know that you can't get a video made for $50. Like, when I seen that, man, I was like, Stop the cap. <laughs> Stop the cap right now. Stop the cap. But look, bro, it's just how it is. It's just how the game go. Can't be mad at it. But if you enjoy this video, man, I appreciate y'all sticking through. The plans for this channel moving forward, I'ma just stick to the script build a stronger relationship with my team and keep grinding, man. Even though we in the hole, I could really see this brand being something huge. I believe in the message. I believe in the work that we putting out. We not playing around. Hey man, let me know in the comment section below if y'all wanna see updates on this channel because we really just getting started. I ain't even profitable yet, you feel me? Like we still got a long way to go. We got a lot of content on the way. If y'all wanna keep seeing updates, let me know in the comment section below and drop a like on this video. And also, I am aware that not everybody could go and do this because I did, one, have a lot of money to get started with this. You've seen how much money I spent up front. And two, I did buy a monetized channel. It was already monetized when I got started with it. So I am aware of those things and I want you to be aware of them too before you get into it. And I'm thinking about doing a challenge where I kind of start with no money or just a smaller budget so that y'all can really see from scratch the process and me doing it without as much money. Cause I know like 
Yeah, I did have a lot of money to get started with. I did have a monetized channel already. So I did have a couple of advantages. I'm not gonna lie. And I ran promos. Like I did all of that to grow the channel, but I really was taking this serious. This really wasn't a challenge. This was something that I really wanted to take serious. But if y'all wanna see a challenge where I start with like no money or a limited budget, let me know in the comment section below as well and I'll make it happen. But I really just wanted to come on here and share my real experience and my real numbers. Something that nobody really ever shows y'all. I'm out. I'll catch y'all in the next one. For the culture.